Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. Tom can do a job in four hours. With Sam's help, it takes two and two nights hours. How long will it take Sam uh, to do this job alone? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the question one more time before I show you the answer. So uh, Tom can do a job in four hours. Now with Sam's help, it takes two and two nights hours. How long will it take Sam working alone? All right, so hopefully this is a pretty straightforward question. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer, it will take Sam five hours working alone to do this job. Now, if you got this right, that is super impressive. Matter of fact, I have to give you a nice little happy face in A++, a 200%. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class or algebra class, I would just say take the rest of the year off. I don't know how you learn all this math. Maybe you're watching that guy on YouTube. But to all jokes aside, if you figured this out, that is fantastic. And I am going to be using algebra to solve this problem. So uh, really, what we're dealing with here is something called a work problem. And uh, these are often uh, kind of confusing for a lot of people to figure out. So if you are a little bit confused, well, in a couple minutes, you'll be looking like this person. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so first things first. First, we have a word problem. And in mathematics, anytime you have a problem, especially a word problem, you want to read this thing at least three times. Okay, although we understand what's going on, I've already read the problem a few times. If it's the first time you're looking at a problem, read it more than once before you start doing something. It gives uh, your brain a chance to kind of kick in and really reflect on all the information. And then, of course, you need to really identify what the question is. In this case, uh, we want to know how long it would take Sam to do this job working alone. So the situation is that Tom can do this job in four hours. We know how long it will take Tom working alone. And of course, we know how long it will take them working together, right? Sam and Tom, it'll take uh, two and two nights hours. But what if Sam works alone? This is the question, how long will it take uh, Sam by himself? So uh, this type of problem, again, is something called, or uh, it is a work problem. It's called a work problem. And it's a typical classic type of algebra word problem. So, you, you know, if you've never kind of seen this before, uh, again, you know, if you study mathematics, algebra, there's these uh, very common type of problems. Matter of fact, I'm just going to quickly uh, to show you real fast if you're curious on what are the cl uh, very classic, typical type of problems that you need to know how to solve. So, again, whether it's algebra, some sort of math, typically it's an algebra problem. Uh, the problem that we're looking at here is a work problem. Other type of problems that you need to know how to solve that come up all the time are motion problems. This involves the uh, formula rate times time is equal to distance. And there is a formula that we're going to need here uh, to solve this particular problem. Well, it's a way to think about word problems, but other type of uh, problems that you'll need to know how to solve in terms of word problems or like mixture problems. These are very classic age problems, uh, money problems. Uh, these are all very, very uh, typical type of word problems. So if you could figure out how to solve all of these, if, if you happen to be a math student, well, you'll probably cover a good 80% uh, plus of the problems that you will face. So let's go ahead and take a look at the formula that we need to understand in order to solve this work problem. Okay, so here it is, and you want to put this in your notes if you are a student. And basically, it is the following. So you want to look at the individual rates of work for each uh, person. Now this, you know, we're talking about Tom and Sam here, but we could be talking about machines. You could have like one machine can do this job at this rate. Another machine does this uh, 
the, the same job at a different rate. So what we're talking about is the rate of each individual uh, person or machine when we're talking about doing work. So the way the formula is, it's one over what, uh, one person's rate uh, to do this job plus uh, one over the other person's. Now, again, these could be machines or individual people, but this is going to be equal to one over how long it takes them together. Okay, so this is the setup to solve this problem. Okay, so if you've never seen this formula uh, before, and there's a couple different ways you can express it, this is a, a very easy type of formula uh, to apply. Uh, you know, you do need to know a little bit of algebra, but if you didn't know how to set this problem up, well, this is the setup. Okay, so now that we uh, uh, we have one over Tom's rate of work, okay, how long it basically takes Tom to do this job, plus over how long it would take Sam to do this job is equal to one over the time it would take for them to do this job together. So what information do we have? Well, we know how long it will take to, uh, Tom to do the job. Okay, we have that. And we also know how long it takes them doing the job uh, uh, together, right? So what we're looking for is this right here. We want to know how long it will take Sam uh, to do this job alone. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take another look at this problem. So Tom can do the job in four hours, right? So that's going to be one over four in our formula. We don't know what how long it will take Sam uh, to do this job by himself. So this is going to be our unknown. That'll be one over X. You'll see this here in a second. But we do know that uh, together, uh, Tom and Sam can do this job in this time, two and two nights hours. All right, so we want to go ahead and put all this information into this formula, and the setup will look like this. Okay, so again, it takes Tom four hours to do this job, so his rate is going to be one over, or this rate in this problem will be one over four, okay? Plus one over Sam's uh, rate, but we don't know what that is, so we're going to put an X right there because this is what we're looking for over how much time it takes them to do this job together. We have that. That's two and two ninths hours. And of course, all these units of measure here are in hours, right? This is hours. This is hours. So when we solve for X, uh, we will um, uh, answer how long it will take Sam to do this job alone in hours. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in all this information into this formula. So this would be 1 over 4 plus 1 over X is equal to 1 over 2 and 2 ninths. So it will look like this. Okay, now this is the setup, and if we can solve for x, we will uh, basically answer the question. So we have a lovely rational equation here, okay? So we're going to have to deal with uh, this fraction and a few fractions over here. This is not that difficult, but if you couldn't set up the problem, maybe you want to go ahead and see if you can actually solve this equation. Of course, I'm going to get into it right now, and the first thing I'm going to do is clean up this mixed number fraction in this denominator. So let's go and do that right now. So we got one over two and two ninths. Well, this is a complex fraction. Anytime you have a, fr a fraction within a fraction, that's called a complex fraction. So let's go ahead and write this in a better way. So let's first figure out what two and two ninths is. So we have one over two and two ninths. Again, this is a mixed number fraction. So let's change this into an improper fraction. So this is nine times two, which is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20, so this is uh, 1 divided by 20 over 9. Now what we can do is kind of write this this way, 1 divided by 20 over 9, so this is 1 divided by 20 over 9. So this is the same thing as this, and so 1 divided by 20 over 9, how do we divide uh, fractions? Well, what you're going to do is turn this into a multiplication problem by flipping the fraction to the right of the division symbol. So we're going to have 1 times 9 over 20, and 1 times 9 over 20, of course, is 9 over 20. All right, so uh, basically, you know, the first thing we have to do here is clean this entire formula up, or this entire uh, fraction up, so we can make solving this formula or equation very easy. So all of this now is equal to 9 over 20, so this is what we have. Okay, so we have one, uh, 1 over 4, 1 fourth plus 1 over x is equal to 9 over 20. So what do we want to, uh, what do, we want to do here? Well, there's a couple different ways we can approach this. Uh, what we want to do is solve for x, okay? Again, uh, a couple of things that you could do is you could 
multiply the entire equation by the LCD. Okay, this would clear the fractions, or we could just go ahead and subtract one fourth from both sides of the equation so we can isolate this variable on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and subtract one fourth for this particular example. Uh, we'll subtract one fourth uh, from both sides of the equation. Now, if you're really good at algebra, you might say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think it's better just to clear fractions. You could do that as well. Uh, the problem will work out the same. But what we're going to do here is get this on the left and get all of our numbers on the right, and then we'll end up with a nice, lovely uh, proportion here in a second. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to have 1 over x is equal to 9 over 20 minus 1 fourth. So we can write that this way, 9 over 20 minus 1 fourth. Of course, we're going to have to do a little bit of fraction work. But uh, this is our problem at this stage of the game. Okay, again, you could have multiplied everything by the LCD and you could still get the right answer. But let's go ahead and take the next step. We're almost there. So we got one over X is equal to nine over 20 minus uh, one fourth. Of course, we're gonna have to do this next. But before we do that, I need you to do this. And that is to hit that subscribe button. Don't you just like how I sneak those things in? Well, I can tell you right now, I've been on YouTube for over 10 plus years. I love teaching math. It's such a great platform. And over those years, I've been able to grow my channel pretty, uh, it's a pretty good size. Uh, right now, I think I have like 530 something thousand, I should really know this, uh, I think maybe 535, uh, maybe more than that. I don't look at it all the time, but there's a lot of people that, 535,000 uh, subscribers. I'm grateful for each and every person that does subscribe or even watches my videos. And I really think about it, it's like, hey, I'm kind of asking you to part with some of your valuable time. So I really try to come up with creative and valuable videos. I don't want to waste your time. And uh, my kind of mission is to really try to make math clear and understandable. So many people get frustrated in math because obviously they don't, they don't understand the instruction that they're receiving. So if you're frustrated, you know, if you're a math student or if you're trying to learn math and you're frustrated, do not get discouraged. Find yourself a teacher or a program that you'll like and understand. And if you think you like my teaching style and you want to take any one of my full courses, if you need uh, full course support, well, look in uh, the description of this video. You'll find links to all my main uh, math courses, again, from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. Uh, so we have 1 over x is equal to 9 over 20 minus 1 fourth. So again, we can't add or subtract fractions unless we have the lowest common denominator or the denominators are the same. So in this case, if we have a 20 here and we have a four here, well, this is very easy, right? So I can turn this four into a 20 by multiplying it by five. But if I multiply uh, the denominator by five, I have to multiply the numerator by five. Again, I'm gonna assume that you understand fractions. If you don't understand any of this stuff, just uh, reference those courses that are referred to uh, in the description of this video for my full course instruction. But I have well over 2,500 videos on my YouTube channel on all topics, you know, math, you know, basic algebra equations, fractions, etc. So you can check those things out as well. But uh, what we're going to do here is multiply this denominator by five so we can have a 20. All right, so let's go ahead and see the next step here, which is uh, we just change this one fourth and now we have the fraction five over 20. And so we have the same denominator. So now we can just simply subtract the numerators, which is going to be nine minus five, right? So nine minus five over 20. Okay, so here we have uh, nine over 20 minus five over 20. Again, we subtract the numerators. So that's gonna be nine minus five, which of course is four over 20. And uh, we can of course reduce that fraction down and we need to do that because we're not done with this problem just yet. So we're trying to solve for x, but what we have here is one over x, so how can I solve for x? Well, there's a few different ways you can look at it, but the easiest way to think about uh, this problem at this stage in the game is to treat this as a proportion, okay? Which by definition is two equal fractions. So you can simply uh, cross multiply. This is an example of something called the cross product. So four times X is four X and one times 20 is 20. So now I have four X is equal to 20. So to solve for X, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by four. Okay, so that gives me X is equal to five. Okay, so what is X? Well, X is the time it's gonna take Sam to uh, do this job alone. 
So let's just kind of review here. So again, don't look at this work formula as like, hey, you're adding fractions. This is a, a uh, you know, a formula that you need to remember to, you know, apply to solve work problems. And oftentimes it could be a little bit confusing, but if you did all the math right, you're going to get the right answer. Okay, so Tom could do this job in four hours. Together, uh, Sam and Tom could do the job in two and two nights hours. And then we just solved for X, which was this uh, rate of how long it will take Sam uh, to do this job alone, which of course is five hours. Okay, so again, right, uh, when it comes to algebra and word problems, uh, for those of you that are students, there are the classic type of problems, very much like classic music. You know, uh, well, at least from my age, classic music was considered the 1960s type of music or 1970s. Uh, now, nowadays, maybe it's music from the 1990s. Who knows, right? But it's just that term classic, you know, um, and it is classic. These type of problems have been around forever. So, again, if you are taking, uh, especially an algebra course, you definitely have to know how to do problems like this, which, again, are called work problems. Uh, but you need to know these other type of problems like rate, time, and distance problems, uh, ratio, proportion problems, mixture problems, age problems, money problems. And if you learn how to do a good handful of those type of problems, you should be pretty well set to ace most of your uh, exams in a basic algebra course. Okay, so hopefully this video was entertaining or you just kind of got something else out of it. Maybe you're like, you know what, that was interesting. And if you miss learning math, by the way, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I built that course for those of you that might be interested in re kind of furbishing your math skills that you lost maybe some 40, 50 years ago. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.